So suppose that you have some ver random variable x, and this follows a gamma distribution, meaning that the probability density function, the PDF, of this random variable is going to be 1 over gamma, gamma of alpha, beta to the alpha, x to the alpha, um, alpha minus 1, e to the negative x over beta. Now the question would be, how do you find the expected value of this? So what we're going to do to find the expected value is we're going to use the definition, is the integral. Now for this, the there is a condition of the gamma uh, distribution with positive x values. So we're going to do this from 0 to infinity of x times the PDF of x. So using this definition, where we are going to find the expected value and then we're going to find the variance as well. So let's do this. Now, what we're going to notice is that eventually the fun part of this video and this problem ends up coming from the fact that we use the gamma function. This is the gamma distribution here. And indeed, in the method of finding the expectation, we need to use the gamma function. It's so very nicely tied in here. So let's do this. This is going to end up being the integral from zero to infinity. Now what I'm gonna do, actually, is this constant here, this right here is just a constant. I'm gonna call this omega. Okay, so we're just gonna treat that as, as some constant omega. So it'll really be omega times the integral from zero to infinity of x times x to the alpha minus one times e to the negative x over beta dx. Hopefully you guys see that. Now we're just going to combine the x's. So this is omega integral from 0 to infinity of x to the alpha e to the negative x over beta. Now from this step, if you think that we're going to do integration by parts, you would sadly be mistaken. While it is tempting to use integration by parts and finding some looping pattern here, it's not exactly going to be the most friendly. When you plug in your limits of integration, you're going to have undefined terms, infinities and zeros and all over the place. It is not going to be fun. But there is a neat trick. and Indeed, we're going to use u substitution here. What we're going to do is we're going to try to get this in the form of a gamma function. So we're going to let u, so let u equal x over beta. We're going to rearrange for x, which is going to be beta times u, which means that when we take the derivative, dx is just going to be beta du. Very nice. So let's put these substitutions in. This integral then becomes omega, integral from 0 to infinity, of, now x is b beta u, so we're going to put beta u to the alpha instead of x to the alpha, e to the negative u, that's what we just let u equal, and then dx, as we see right here, dx is beta du. Very nice. Now I'm going to bring the constants out here, so the beta to the alpha and the beta can all come out, and so this is going to be omega times beta to the alpha times beta is beta to the alpha plus 1. So just bringing constants out. And we're left with u to the alpha, e to the negative u, du. And indeed, this is in the form of the gamma function. Now, it's not exactly as the gamma function, because this right here, the integral right here, is actually i of, or gamma, sorry, not i, gamma of alpha plus 1. Because in the actual gamma function, this top exponent here should have a minus 1. But because it's just alpha, we would say it's just gamma of alpha plus 1. Now recall that if we did just have gamma of alpha, it would just be the integral from 0 to infinity of u to the alpha minus 1 e to the negative u du. Often these are replaced with z's and t's, so this would be basically t to the 
z minus 1 e to the negative t dt, but we just replace it in for alpha. So this integral then becomes, now I'm going to reintroduce omega here. Remember, omega up here was 1 over gamma of alpha times beta to the alpha. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is we're going to have beta to the alpha plus 1 over gamma of alpha times beta to the alpha. Okay. From there, what we're going to do is re-multiply this by gamma of alpha plus 1. So gamma of alpha plus 1. We're going to do some very, very convenient canceling here. Firstly, the beta uh, to the alpha on the denominator cancels out, and we're left with, this is going to be, beta times, now, gamma of alpha plus 1 divided by uh, gamma of alpha. Well, we can actually rewrite gamma of alpha plus 1 as alpha gamma of alpha. So that's a neat little trick there. And so we all we're left with is when these two terms cancel out, all we have is just beta and alpha, beta times alpha. So there is our solution. So the expected value of this random variable, which follows a gamma distribution, is alpha times beta for whatever parameters you put for alpha and beta. Of course, there are cons constraints reflected on those parameters, but I'm not going to go into that today. So we found the expectation, now I want you to find the variance. Well, it turns out the variance of x is equal to the expected value of x squared minus the expected value of x quantity squared. So we're going to do that right now. Now taking that same definition route, the expected, we need to find this thing. We know what this term is. All we do have to do is just square alpha times beta. But to find the expected value of the variable squared, we're going to have to redo another integral. This time, it's just going to be omega integral 0 to infinity of x squared x to the alpha minus 1 times e to the negative x over beta dx. And in fact, this case is even is, is pretty much uh, as the same as the one before. What we're going to notice is that we're going to have the integral with omega attached. So omega integral from 0 to infinity, but it's just going to be x to the alpha plus 1 e to the negative x over beta dx. Notice that inside here, when we do the u substitution, so we're going to do all the following things. So we're going to let u equal x over beta, so dx is just uh, beta du, right? We're going to use those same substitutions. What we end up getting is omega integral 0 to infinity of u. So we're going to u to the alpha plus 1 e to the negative u du with, of course, the constants outside. So I'm going to move this a little bit back. And it's going to be times um, beta beta squared. So beta to the alpha plus 1 comes out. That should be right. And the inside here is just gam gamma of alpha plus 2. That's all it is. This is gamma of alpha plus 2. Up here, we had gamma of alpha plus 1, and down here, because there's another plus 1 at the top, we're just going to add one more. So this just turns out to be gamma of alpha plus 2 over gamma, these are horrible drawings of gamma, times beta to the alpha plus 2 over beta to the alpha Okay,
so hopefully you guys so the betas just come out i skipped a bunch of steps but i think you can figure that on your own and indeed we can rewrite this term here a gamma of alpha plus two as alpha times alpha plus one times gamma of alpha so the gammas of alphas uh, will, will cancel out and indeed the ver uh, the expected value of this random variable squared is just going to be alpha plus one times alpha times beta squared okay so here's what we've discovered so far we found that the expected value of x is equal to alpha beta the expected value of x squared is equal to alpha plus 1 times alpha times beta squared, which is just equal, I'm going to simplify this to alpha squared beta squared plus alpha beta squared. This squared is just alpha squared beta squared. So the variance of x, remember, is this minus this squared. So it's going to be alpha squared beta squared plus alpha beta squared minus alpha squared beta squared. And these will easily cancel out and all you're left with is alpha beta squared as your variance. So there you go. That's how you find the expected value of a random variable following a gamma distribution. Now something nice happens here. In the gamma distribution, if or when, when a is equal to k over 2 and beta, sorry, not a, alpha, and beta is equal to just 2, this is a chi-square distribution. It is a specific case of gamma. So indeed, the variance of x, if we plugged in these facts, we would actually just get variance as um, k over 2 times 4, which is 2k. And the expected value would just be k over 2 times 2, which is k. So these, so this is the variance, and this is the expected value. So that's some that's a very interesting little thing that comes out of as a result. So hopefully this uh, helped you a little bit in seeing what probability theory was all about. And I hope this video got um, you a little more experience in dealing with these functions um, and doing some integrals and expectation calculus. So yeah, um, see you guys in the next video. Awesome.